Because well, the first thing that God do is remove you out of the perception of people. The perception of people. What gets you in trouble most of the, all the time in a person's life, they never become them. They never become their self. So what God had to do is pull him out of the perception of people. The Bible said he did not come before people until he was in the wilderness until the day of his ministry. Coming out of the perception of people. You can't look like other people. You go to school and school teach you how to act like other people. You go and we appreciate things. God wants you to be you. God on that anointing only fall on you. And his job was to say, prepare ye the way of the Lord. It's really important that we prepare the way. But in order for your, the way to be prepared, you got to know yourself. The Bible said, love your neighbor as you love yourself. You got to learn how to love you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before you can love anybody else, you got to love you. And if you don't come out, the Bible said, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, then I'll receive you. You got to be you. He had to come out of the Levitical priesthood to prepare the way. So, tell somebody said prepare the way. He had to, well, he had to look different. He had to come with a whole different methodology. He had to come from a whole nother different way in order for the power of God to be manifested in his life. Yeah. In order for the God's power to be manifested in your life, you can't do it like everybody else. Yeah. You got to learn who you are. Yeah. In the time in the wilderness, he will win camera hat. Mm -hmm. He was acting like a prophet before him. Yeah. He was operating in prophetic when he's supposed to be Levitical. Yeah. He's supposed to be a Levitical priest, and here he is, a prophet. But the Bible said, he said that I will call you up. You will be priest of the Lord. Mm -hmm. You shall be a royal priesthood, a peculiar people according to the book of Peter. So it's really important for us to see the shifting. Mm -hmm. You got to shift. You got to change. If you want to see God manifest in your life, you can't be like other people. Yeah. First of all, that's why it's so important to forgive. Mm -hmm. That's why it's so important for you to see yourself. Say, Lord, I release people. I release myself. Mm -hmm. You got to release you. You got to release you. You're going to have to release you. If you're going to love somebody else, you're going to have to release you. You're going to have to forgive you. Mm -hmm. If you don't forgive you, you're going to take on somebody else's identity. Mm -hmm. You're going to take on somebody else's identity. John prepared the way for the Lord, but he had to take on his own identity. Mm -hmm. You have to take on your own identity. You cannot walk around like other people. Mm -hmm. And God hides you. The Bible said, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. According to the book of Psalm 91, how you abide under the shadow of the Almighty is the perception of people. Mm -hmm. The way people see you. Mm -hmm. When you drive a Rolls Royce, people look at you different. When you drive a Mercedes Benz, they look at you different. When you drive a Pinto, people look at you different. You gotta have a pinto when it sm and smell like smoke and, and, and the gas films are uh, filling your clothes and you walk around you smell like the gas. People look at you different. <laughs> perception. So sometimes God has you living like that, the, per the perception of people. He hides you in the perception of people. But if you begin to start seeing God and who he is because he's trying to make you you. He's trying to make you make your own choices. He said, I set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life. I set it before you, but you got to be you. I set it before you, and I made you in my image. I made you in my likeness. You got to make the decision. You have to make the choice. And when we do, the Bible said men, and according to the book of Proverbs, the Bible said men choose ways, and they get mad at God about it. They choose them and get mad at God. But God said, I made you in my image. I made you in my likeness. So when God make us, we cannot act like somebody else. We can't act like somebody else. We can't act like we don't know. We can't blame our father, my sister, my brother, my cousin, my niece, my nephew, my auntie, my uncle, my brother them, my cousin them, Frank them. I can't blame them. <laughs> I have to take on the role of being myself. I have to take on the role of being myself. Everybody said, prepare you the way of the Lord. Prepare you the way of the Lord. 
His job was to prepare the way of God. Your job today is to prepare the way for God to intervene in your life. The Bible said when uh, the Bible said that for us to sing psalms, prepare the way of the Lord, hymns, spiritual songs, singing, making melody in your heart toward the Lord. What am I doing? I'm preparing my way for the Lord. I'm preparing the way. When I be, read the word, what I'm doing? I'm preparing the way of the Lord. What am I doing? I'm getting my heart ready for his supernatural anointing. I'm getting my heart ready for his power. I'm getting my heart ready for his spirit. I'm getting it ready. You got to get it ready. Everybody say, get it ready. Get it ready. You got to get it ready. Mm -hmm. You got to get ready for the Lord. You have to make preparation. It's just like somebody saying, the president is coming. Mm -hmm. If somebody tell you the president is coming, you're going to clean up. Mm -hmm. Or somebody tell, me, tell you somebody that's significant in your life is coming, you're going to clean up. You're going to look and make the place look uh, uh, best as possible. Mm -hmm. So it is in the spirit world. Mm -hmm. Jesus is coming. Huh? Yeah. Jesus is coming. You sure? That's why he's coming. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Somebody say it. Jesus is coming. Come on, one more time. Jesus is coming. Come on, one time. Jesus is coming. One more time. Jesus is coming. <laughs> Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Come on, let's go to the Lord. Pray. Yeah. You're making preparation. Yeah. You're preparing for God getting ready to do something. <clears throat> The farmer, when he formed, I'm from the country, so I know about this. When the farmer, when he formed, and when he, he break up that foul ground, in order for the seed to be able to be sensitive enough to go into that ground, it has to be broken up. It can't go on hard ground. It got to be broken up. That foul ground, they call it tilling the ground. The ground has to be broken up. The hard rocks and all that kind of stuff that's in the, in the soil have to be removed. And then when it's, be, when it's removed, then you put the seed in there. And when you put the seed on the inside, it's, it's able to grow. The roots are able to, to come in. God said, hard not your hearts. As in the days of provocation, in the days of temptation, when they probe me and they try me and they saw my word many years. He said, and they shall not do what? Enter into my rest. Because God wants you what? Resting. God wants you in his peace. Every decision you make, you must become peaceful. That's the fruit of the Spirit. Peace. peace. He said, I'm going to leave something with you. Peace. Peace. Value peace. Value peace. Value peace. Always do things that will cause peace in your life. Yeah. What will cause peace in my life? Mm -hmm. What will cause me to have serenity? Where, where do serenity come from? Where is my peace? Mm -hmm. The power of peace. Mm -hmm. The scripture says, when, God, when Jesus began to start dealing with peace, the scripture says that, that he was in the, up under a boat sleep. Mm -hmm. And while he was on a, on a boat sleep, the Bible said that the wind became boisterous. Mm -hmm. Or it became really big. The, the waves and the billows coming up real high. And the people coming back down. Water coming on the inside of the boat. They're trying to get the, uh, the water out of the boat. Mm -hmm. And the more water they're putting uh, out the boat, the more water go in the boat. Mm -hmm. And Jesus was down there asleep. And Peter wake him up and said, Carry thou not that we perish. Mm -hmm. And Jesus get up and said, peace be still. Yeah. Peace. Yeah. But it controlled the elements. Yeah. Yeah. Peace control the elements. Mm -hmm. The elements in your life, peace control it. Mm -hmm. Peace be still. And somebody said, peace be still. It's real important for us to be in peace. Yeah. Peace represent the power of God. Peace represent the anointing of God. Peace represent. You don't do things fast. He said, let us what? Labor to enter into his wife. Rest. If any man should seem to come what? Short of it. That means you become short of the rest of God. We can become real short of the rest of God. Resting. You'll be surprised how many people don't rest. They did a statistic. They said only well, uh, the people in, in United States of America, United States of America, only get four hours of sleep a night. Four hours of rest. Nobody sleep. The only time the service crashes at night. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. The service crashes at night. You two be over there sweating. <laughs> mm -hmm. Got some people over there working real hard trying to keep them servers up. Got fans up there because they blowing them. Because so much, so many people just going in. I can't sleep. 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 Rest! Mm -hmm. I hear the Lord say rest. Mm -hmm. Rest. 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 Have peace. Within yourself, peace. Mm -hmm. I remember a long time ago when I was growing up, 
uh, 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 the, 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 the TV went off at 12 o'clock. Right at 12 o'clock. That's why you always knew what time it was. All of a sudden you hear somebody say, Georgia, Georgia, no sweet I know. <laughs> then next thing you know, the TV go off. <laughs> and you don't hear nothing but shh, static or everywhere. Or you'll, you'll hear the uh, old say, can you see? <laughs> and it will come off. But now, people stay on it. They got them on the hill. They got them right here. They, got, they, they, they talking to people. And people talking back. That, in fact, that was scamming. If, I'm, if, if it's 3 o'clock in the morning, I talk to somebody, they respond to me back. I'm like, ah! That means you up! <laughs> what are you doing up at this time of night? Peace. Somebody said, peace be still. Peace be still. You have to rest. God want you to rest. God wants you to rest. He talked to you in your peace. If you ever want to hear God, become peaceful. If you ever want to hear God, do what? Become peaceful. Just become quiet. God, what do you want? And let me hear you. And let me sit down long enough to hear you. Anytime a prophet wrote something in the Bible, if you begin to start seeing, a lot of times they were incarcerated. There were a lot of times they was in a place they couldn't move. Revelation was written by a man who was in the Isle of Patmos. He was actually in the ground. He was in the ground. Couldn't move. And God began to speak to him. A man who wrote two-thirds of the New Testament was with Paul, who wrote the Pauline's Doctrine. And when he, when he started writing the Pauline Scripture, a lot of times he was in jail. And he would write them and had the women going out, uh, uh, passing them out to each church. It was really important for us to see that God wants us to be still. Somebody said, be still. Be still. Be still. The Bible said, be still and know that I'm God. Revelation and information come when you be still. God wants you to show, he wants to show his characteristics. He wants to show who he is in your life. God wants to show who he is in your life. So you have to be still. You have to be in a place Well, God let me hear you. And then he make you you. Because a lot of times you make you yourself. Mm. When God met Moses, when God met Moses, somebody said God met Moses. Okay. When God met Moses, he introduced Moses to himself. Yes. He told Moses who made you, who created you, who made your mouth, who told you you can do this, who did this, who did this. And all of a sudden, he knew who he was.